Hi, welcome to the learning session on Indian economy. In this particular session, we will talk about uh, education. Uh, and this, you will get it in the chapter on education in the book, uh, uh, Dat & Sundaram's Indian economy. So, uh, education is a very important thing for human capital development. Um, and in this chapter, we will talk about uh, the emphasis uh, of, on education under different five-year plans. Then state of India's education, state of schooling. So we'll provide a lot of tables, a lot of numbers, uh, and and uh, we'll see the progress over the years. Um, and uh, we'll talk about uh, gross enrollment ratios and dropout rate, especially for early education. And uh, then actually we'll also talk about education policy and the national education policy of 2020, which is right now being launched. And we also talk about the impact on children during the COVID-19 and what policies actually government can take. So, uh, since Indian independence, the Indian education system has been considered as one of the most important areas to develop the human capital. So, uh, what India did, India, uh, time to time, India set up different uh, committees and um, got the recommendations and changed the policy accordingly. So, uh, the most important thing that university education systems was established in 1948 by the chairmanship of Dr. Radhakrishnan, our president. Uh, and then uh, we had a coterie commissions um, in 1964, uh, so which actually provides the framework of Indian education system. And then, uh, then there are uh, several uh, amendments we did uh, in, uh, in our constitutions. For example, 73rd, 74th and 86th amendment. And we brought... Uh, the, the concept of right to free and compulsory education for children. So that means every Indian child is having the right to get the education. So that's why the primary educations have been made free in most the uh, government schools. Um, then and the secondary education policy was introduced in 1986. Then we modified that in 1990s. And now we have a, an education policy of 2020. So in this particular slide, We'll talk about five-year plans and how actually India's education policy changed. So you can see that uh, throughout the decades, India initially focused on basic education, then higher education, then human uh, capital development, then infrastructure development, uh, then global connectivity with the education systems in India. Um, so those are basically some of the, the areas. And interestingly, we integrated other policies uh, also with the education's policies. Uh, for example, ICDS, uh, which is the Integrated Child Development Scheme. So those schemes, uh, nutrition, preschool education are being connected to that. So uh, so India actually is having an education policy, but at the same time, some other policies are also uh, brought here. Uh, here, in this particular slide, we briefly uh, talk about uh, the education policies. So 68 which is basically Coterie Commission's report. We talk about skill development uh, and the compulsory education uh, of children. And then we have uh, um, early education and child-centric approach, uh, which was brought in 1986 um, and which has been modified in 1992. Uh, and there in 2009, the most important thing is Right to Education Act came. And in 2020, we've uh, actually... Um, uh, uh, having a significant change in our national education policies, we are trying to make the policies right now more holistic, trying to make uh, keep make the children job ready, and also having a continuity and the entire life cycle approach of education. So you are actually trying to bring. So here we have certain data. So you can see that uh, years of schooling over the years have increased. So that's a Think so it's a progress, but you might say that it is not a significant progress over the years, but it's a progress we can see. And literacy rate also uh, has improved over the years. So gross enrollment ratio is a very important ratio. So primary, upper primary, and secondary level. So you can see uh, this is for a particular age group, how many children were actually being enrolled. So you'll be interesting, you will find out that at the primary level, uh, this is more than 100. So that means 
some uh, people who are not, some kids who are not of that age group are also being enrolled in this. For example, suppose if you say their primary uh, education is between five to eight years, so some of the kids who are 10 or 11 years are also being enrolled. So that's why the numbers is sometimes becomes more than 100. But you can see upper primary and secondary, there's a significant drop. So that means, uh, that means what is happening, um, that the children are not continuing with the schools. So, uh, so it is basically uh, the same story, but if you look at every level over the years, the numbers have increased. And dropout ratios are here, which is also have come down substantially. So we'll talk about education policies, how actually we are trying to uh, arrest the dropout ratio. So one most important thing is about uh, the infrastructure facilities. So you can see the like toilets, uh, uh, you know, um, hand wash facilities, library, electricity, computer, internet. So, uh, so there are three bars. So, uh, so we can see that there's a significant jump in every area. So of course we are not having computer and internet at every schools, but we ha we have achieved the area that you know almost 100 percent schools. Uh, to almost 99 point some percent schools are having toilets and hand wash facilities. Libraries, so we have reached almost 87 percent. So in next few years, our main target is basically to bring computer and internet to every school so that even the poor kid is actually been, uh, been exposed to the internet and computer and modern educations. Uh, and the number of recognized schools have also been uh, significantly increased over the years. So this is basically providing an idea about the distribution of persons received formal or vocational training. So uh, not everyone needs to go to the highest level of education. Some level of education with the vocational capability are very important uh, for India to, um, uh, to push people to the job market with certain skill. So uh, there are several uh, initiatives government took over the years, like Skill India Mission uh, and Janshikha, uh, Sangstan scheme, uh, skill acquisitions and knowledge awareness of livelihood promotion skill, national apprentice promotion skill. So government after government actually provided some sort of um, incentives for developing the vocational skill of the, uh, the students here in India. So here is uh, now the other story. The other story is about the expenditure. The expenditure on education as percentage of GDP, as you can see, has dropped from 4.1% to 2.8% and hovering around 3%. So this is a major cause of concern because India needs more spending for developing human capital. And uh, though in terms of, actually in, in, in terms of absolute value, it is increasing, okay? It's, it is just the rupees lakhs crore, so it is increasing. But, um, you know, as a percentage of total expenditure and a percentage of social service expenditures, the education expenditures is coming down is by the government. So that is a, a cause of concern in some cases. Now, finally, uh, impact of COVID-19 uh, are very, very important here. So what we are seeing that during COVID, uh, who suffered maximum? The poor kids who are in the schools uh, because schools are closed. So that's why what is happening, um, the kids are uh, back home. So not everyone is having exposed to computer uh, and internet. So well, their learning got stopped. So it's only the privileged class people uh, during the COVID time, those kids who are exposed to the school education and able to learn it. So, uh, so here actually we are getting a major question that how actually India is trying to bring people in the school. So uh, a significant uh, uh, aspects of India's early education policy as basically the midday meal, Sarvashik Savya, National Program of Education as girls and ed, uh, um, girls and elementary level. So those policies are extremely important. So the poor kids are coming to the schools. Um, they are uh, getting the basic learnings, but at the same time, they're getting midday meal. So now what happens because of COVID, not only does the education got, um, got stalled, but midday meals also stopped. So, so almost for two years, almost for two years, they were deprived of educations. Now when the school opens, um, the two years are lost and many of the early kids, early education level, the kids actually forgot. So uh, what they learned. So relearning these things, 
and making them to uh, overcome uh, the loss of two years are becoming a Herculean task. And so at this moment, the, the, the education, especially at the school education level, this is a very, very important aspect which India needs to, um, uh, to consider in next few years because uh, almost a generation actually are having the similar problem. So those who are in early education, those who are in secondary, those who are in, in, in the, uh, in the uh, final stage of education, so everybody's education got suffered. Um, but actually, how actually we are going to overcome those things? So we require some kind of a policy for for those kind of activities. So uh, let us see that how actually the the national education policies, the way it has been uh, been designed, are providing a lot of such opportunities for state governments and central governments to come together and provide a platform by which actually uh, the makeup. Uh, of uh, loss of the years can be uh, made. So what we are seeing that the India's education sector, if, we, if you allow me to uh, summarize, then I can say that India has been progressing in terms of uh, reduction in literacy rate, in terms of enrollment ratio, in terms of reduction in, in dropout. So uh, this progress is phenomenal. What we have seen, some of the basic facilities in the schools, are also there toilets, libraries, uh, and also electricity. So now what we require, more computers and internet um, should be there in the schools. Uh, however, what we are seeing, the expenditures, um, education level, expenditures on education um, are not increasing. So currently it is around 3% of GDP and it remained the 3% of GDP for quite some time. Um, so you might argue that India's GDP itself is increasing as India's GDP is increasing, so uh, in terms of total uh, expenditure on education, because it's, it's almost 3%, so it's, a, its expenditure is increasing. So overall expenditure is increasing, it has to increase, but in terms of uh, social sector expenditure, in terms of total expenditures, it is not increasing. So that was the major cause of concern. And, uh, and uh, once we are putting up the kids to the school level, from the school to the college, to the universities, or to the vocational level, how actually we are bringing uh, them uh, ready for the job market. There are new kinds of skills required, um, and those skills need to be uh, provided. So uh, training for teachers or creating new, new teachers in those lines are also becoming very, very important, especially uh, after the post-COVID period. So uh, that's all for this particular chapter. Thank you. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.